All right. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to work your way around the GarageBand application on an iOS device. Today, I'm going to be using my iPad Pro. This is a powerful tool for a device such as an iPhone or an iPad. You can do a lot in there. I think it's so underrated. I'm going to show you how to get your way around. If you don't have the GarageBand app, go ahead and go to the App Store and download it for free if you have a newer device. Once it's downloaded, click on the icon and let's open it up. From here, you have your recent songs. I don't have recent songs because I've deleted most of it off. But if you were to start a new song, you would go ahead and click the plus button up in the top right corner under that 23% of battery that I have. From here, you can swipe your finger left and right to go through instruments and effects and apps. I Today, I'm going to choose the keyboard. Now, if you notice at the bottom, you'll see Smart Keyboard, Alchemy, Sampler. There's different options. Today, I'm just going to pick the keyboard. So you just tap your finger anywhere in that upper area where, the, where you see the keyboard picture. So the keyboard opens. I have it on Grand Piano right now. If you tap on your iPad where you see the piano keys down there, they will play. Also, your iPad will play them based slightly on what it thinks you've tapped the velocity. So if you tap it lighter, it will play lighter. If you hit your, key, your iPad harder, it will play it harder. It's not perfect, but it's actually pretty impressive for the fact that this iPad isn't even touch sensitive. Now, we're going to start at the top left where you see My Songs. If you click that button, it'll take you back to the menu where you have your recent music. To the right of that, you have the three squares there. What that is, is that is your sound menu. So you can go click that and go back to where you see your options for what sound you wanna use. It will change that first instrument that you have there where we have a picture of a grand piano up in the top left there. We can change that. I'll show you an example. Let's pick a guitar. Now you see a guitar up in the option there instead of a piano. If you click that button again, we're going to go back to the keyboard. Now, next to my songs and then the option for sounds, you have what is the track view. If you click it, it will make your instrument disappear. And then from here, you can more clearly see the tracks as, you, as you've made more of a complex song and the tracks are layered down your screen. If you wanted to adjust these tracks, you slide your finger from that left area to the right. It will open up the area where you can adjust the volume of each track, mute or solo it. If you scroll your finger back to the left, you can close it. Down at the bottom of that left area, you see a plus button. That is where we go if you wanted to add another sound. Now you'll see two pianos there. I'm going to click back on the top one and we'll continue to move on. To the right of the track view button, you'll see a mix view. From here, you can adjust the settings on the sound that you have selected or the track you have selected. If you click there and where it says track settings, Quantization, transposition, recording. If you don't know what quantization is, what that is, is it will snap your note to perfect timing. There are different options for what timing you'd like. Transposition allows you to take the phrase that you've recorded and either go up octaves or semitones. This is great if you want to create a bridge and you want the song to transpose up in octaves to make it more dramatic or down to typically make it less dramatic. Under that, you have your recording options. From here, you can click different options that allow you to record over what you've recorded and then combine the two or record over it to make separate takes that you can choose from. Now we're going to go back. Under track settings, you have your output. This is just basically another way to adjust the volume on the track, pan it left and right, mute it, or solo it. Under that, you have your plugins and EQ. From here, 
you can change the compression, the treble, the bass, or if you click in that top banner, you can adjust your options within. To the right of where it says plugins and EQ, there's an edit button. If you click that, it will allow you to add extra effects other than compression and visual EQ. In here, you can also even add audio unit extensions. I don't currently have any loaded on my iPad, so I can't show you an example of that. We're going to go out and press done and back. Below that menu, you will find master effects. From here, you can change the echo or the reverb on the master track or all of the tracks combined. And we're back. Scrolling your eyes to your right, you'll see the return to beginning button. That's the triangle facing left with the hard line on it. That will take you to the beginning of the track so you can start recording from the start or start listing from the start if you just want to press play, which is your next button, your play button, and then your record button. Currently, by default, there's a four count count in before it starts recording. So if I click the record button, it will count in a count of four before it starts recording, giving you a chance to prepare and start playing. To the right of that, you have your master volume. If you put your finger on that and you scroll to the left or scroll to the right, it will turn the master track up or down. To the right of that, you have your metronome. Currently, it's considered to be lit as it's blue. If you click it, you'll turn it off. To the right of that, you'll find a emblem that looks like a loop. That's exactly what it is. This is where you go to find all of the Apple loops. You can narrow them down by instrument, by genre, or descriptors. Up at the top of that menu, where it says Apple Loops, to the right of that, you'll find Files. There is where you can find samples and audio clips and WAV files that you've loaded onto your iOS device that you can use into your song and play them like the Apple Loops. To the right of that, you'll find Music. Here's where you can take music from your iTunes library and drag it in. People like to use this option to remix. To the right of the loop option, you'll find the wrench. The wrench is your settings. From here, you can change the metronome. You can allow it to count in or not. You can allow it to have the visual count in. Below that are your sound options for your metronome. It could be a click, a wood block, a hi-hat, a rim shot, or no sound at all. You can also turn your metronome up and down. To the right of that, you have your help menu. This option is pretty convenient as it pops up highlighted areas that you can read to help you navigate around GarageBand so you don't need me. Now, moving down, right above our keyboard, to the far left, you'll find your greater than and less than with a zero in the middle. What that is, is that's your octave. If you press a note, C3, and you press the down, it changed to C2. If you press the up, it's back to C3, up again, C4. If you click the middle button that currently displays the plus one, it takes you back to zero. Next to the octave options, you'll find sustain. By default, if you press a button, it only sustains if you hold it. If you press it, then release, it dampens. Now, if you want it to sustain on the fly, you can hold the sustain button, and even though you let go of the note, it continues to sustain until you lift your finger off the sustain button. If you slide it, it will sustain automatically until you click the sustain button, and then it will dampen. Moving our eyes to the right, we have the option to either run our fingers across the keys and make it roll, or put our finger on a note, then move the keyboard to change octaves quickly. To the right of that, one of my favorite options, the scale. In here, by default, it's off. But say we wanted to play a blues scale. 
For someone who does not play keys or has a difficult time playing it on an iPad screen or even worse, an iPhone screen, you can click one of these options and it allows you to stay in key. I'll pick major blue scale. Now from here, it will only play the notes within the major blue scale. Let's change it up. We'll try Japanese. This can be a great help for somebody who doesn't play but knows what they want. To the right of the scale option, you have your keyboard option. From here, you can change either from a single keyboard to a double keyboard, so you can have multiple octaves. So I can go with the lows on the bottom and the highs on top. Going back into the option, I'll go back to single. You can also change the size of the keys. Small, medium, large. Also, you can make it a double keyboard with large, medium, or small keys. To the right of the keyboard option, you have your Pregiator. To turn it on, you switch the run. From here, you have options to change how it's played or what order it's played. So if I start it played them in the order that I played it. You can change it to random, up and down, which makes it literally go up then back down, down only or up only. You can also change the rate of the notes. We'll go to 116 triplet. You can also change the octave range. Next to that, another one of my favorite options. Here, you can play chords even when you don't know your chords. At the top of each of these note areas, say C, it's the high C chord. Then as you go down, they get lower. In the gray area, those are your bass notes. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is sounds. There in the middle of your screen, you see classical grand. That's what type of sound we're playing. If you click in that area, it opens a menu to change your sounds. With individual sounds, also changes the format of the screen. Here's an organ. It looks like an old school organ. The fan is rotating. You can change that from slow to fast. And the sound changes appropriately. You have your other organ options laid out for you to adjust. Click back in the classic rock organ area, and we can go to, say, an electric piano. From here, you can change tremolo, chorus, decay, bell, all the options that you'd have on an electric piano. Let's choose another. Smooth clav. The look and feel of it changes, and you have the options of a clav. Now, one of my favorite parts about the iOS version of GarageBand is that it's easy to go through sounds. Because when you click a sound, you can play it, click another, and another, and the menu stays open for you to audition sounds. This is a huge time saver when it comes to trying to find the right sound that inspires you to make your new song. That's all I'm going to go over today. I thank you for watching. Open that app on your phone, your iPad, or your iPod Touch, and play some music today. Make sure you subscribe. Hit the bell option so you can get notifications when I upload a new video. Watch some of the other videos. I'll be back to dig a little deeper into this application. It's actually pretty amazing for a mobile device app. 
As always, I'm out. Keep producing.